Whoa! Charlemagne apologized. He came out and apologized today to Kwame Brown and gave himself donkey of the day. I wish I could play this audio, but I don't trust a salamander bastard like this at all. Now, if you really meant to apologize, why are you reading it off the damn screen, man? Why are you reading it off the damn computer screen? Really? That's what you're doing right now? It should come from the heart, bro. But I just need to hear no there. Anyway, thank you guys who all like the page and everything. I appreciate that. Like the video we did yesterday and the day before that and the day before that and the day before that. <laughs> all the new people, welcome. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to the page. Hit that notification bell. We appreciate it. Uh, the super chat is now there for you. You crying for it. You got it. My cash app is still uh, Carcito for life. And let's get into this. Now, Charlemagne last week decided to make all this man's Kwame Brown's family history public, you know, on a public platform on the syndicated network. He got up there. He was so bold and proud that he was from it, that he knew this guy who was trending and breaking the Internet is from his hometown in South Carolina. So. He went to school with the sister, couldn't wait to tell everybody that. He was so eager, eager as a beaver, to go in there and tell this side of the story. Well, things change the more they stay the same. Yep, things change the more they stay the same. Because Charlemagne came out and apologized today. And everybody's like, man, he took full responsibility. He clowned himself. He said, man, I got to do that. I got to get better. You know, I'd rather come out and apologize. And he did it live. And he said, after talking to people in his hometown, talking to his spiritual advisor, and all of these people in his hometown, he would never have disrespected somebody or go back and forth with somebody from his hometown. This was just not what he wanted, you know, and this is the end of it. So, naturally, it was over. As quickly as it started, it was over. Shocking the world, right? But, Let's get into the real. The real is, why is he apologizing? Everything he told you as the reason why he's apologizing is bullshit. Listen, here's the reason Charlemagne is apologizing. Charlemagne is apologizing because just like everybody else, it's blowing up in his face. Everything he thought he got rid of three years ago is coming right back up again, right in his face. And he can't believe it that all of this stuff is coming back. And the people are with Kwame Brown. And he's just responding to what you did. And he is demoralizing you. Over, over the weekend, Charlemagne took a pounding. He was on the phone putting cease and desist orders and all this stuff in place, sending it over to Kwame Brown. Now you finna come out and apologize because the cease and desist wasn't working. You thought that was going to put it, everything back in your favor, and it didn't. It made it worse. And then the fan fans got to the point where they was like, man, we should just start boycotting the sponsors that sponsor the Breakfast Club. We got to shut this down. When the fans start talking like that, you got a major problem on your hands. A major problem. That just shows you the per the right person with the right voice can move millions. We spoke about the pebble in the shoe. Pebble in the shoe. Everybody get a pebble in the shoe, no matter your size, no matter how big, how small, how tall. 
you're going to have to stop and deal with that pebble. You ain't going to keep walking on it. And now you see the power he has and the big money made machine that you are that backs you told you what the right way to do it. You went and talked to Angela Rye. You went and talked to all your other people in the other rooms, all your liberal people who told you how to get out of this mess. They said, well, you shouldn't have stepped in it like that. This is what you should have done. But now we're going to get you out of it. First thing you do is you apologize to this man. You hug him. You give him all the praises in the world. And you tap out of this. You got to get that wolf off your back. That's what you do. So he comes out. Kills him with kindness. See, this in the business is known as kill him with kindness. When we worked in any place of business and we had a hostile person, they say be the nicest you could ever be to them. Overly nice. Kill them with kindness. Because they can never say you wasn't nice to them. No matter what they upset about it. They can never say, well, he was disrespectful. He wasn't nice. Killing him with kindness. Now, that's what he's doing here. He's saying, I'm willing to be the butt of all jokes. I'm willing to move forward. And that way, can't nobody say anything about me anymore. They don't have to throw my old situation back in my face again. But now it's up to Kwame Brown. Does he want to accept your apology? Right? It's up to him. He doesn't have to. This is kind of breaking. So he might not have seen it yet. Or it's probably been brought to his attention by now. But I'm quite sure he's going to make a video about it. And give his thoughts on it. But I'm quite sure you got cussed out when you call people. From your own hometown. I ain't going to say that didn't happen. But that ain't the reason why you out here. Giving yourself donkey of the day. Because if you had felt like that. You wouldn't have sent a cease and desist letter. Now you could play that. That wasn't you. That was a lawyer and all this. No. You sent the cease and desist letter. You don't send a cease and desist letter. Then come out and apologize. You saw... That letter was having zero effect. And it was going blowing up in your face as a negative. It made it worse. And when you make things worse, the outcome is never going to go in the favor you believe it's going to go in. You felt I'm Charlemagne. I'm on iHeartRadio. I'm the big man on campus. Okay, big man on campus, how did that, how do you feel now that a little guy in Georgia, small country boy, who grew up in the same hometown you did, is not sitting in a big syndicated network on television. He's sitting in his car, sitting in his Denali, or sitting in his office chair. And he has the whole world paying attention to what he's saying. And it just ain't people from the United States. It's people from Australia. There's people from New Zealand, <laughs> Greece, Ireland, worldwide are watching and paying attention to what's going on. Now, most of them might have tuned in for the drama, but did Kwame cause the drama? No. Y'all did. Y'all caused all the drama. He's responding to all the drama that you guys created and you guys brought. But he had a message. He used that and said, okay. I can now tell you my message. 
In case people did not understand or did not follow Kwame Brown, I'm going to tell y'all this. Kwame Brown has been saying these messages for years on his YouTube channel. He's been saying these messages. Y'all just wasn't listening. So I advise all of you to go check out Kwame Brown's bus life and really go look into his channel and look at all the, the gems he was giving you guys. Focus on that. And Charlemagne, if you really sorry, join with him. Get those programs going. Help him help black people get educated. Our youth, help him. Actually help them. He's from your hometown. Reach out to him and say, hey, I want to help you out on some of these programs, man. If I wrong somebody and I knew I was wrong, I'm not just going to do it in public. If, unless I, if I clown them in public, I'm apologizing in public. But we definitely got to have a conversation. Me and him. If I really felt wrong, I got to make that right. You see what I'm saying? You got to make that right. So that falls on your head, Charlemagne. You got to make that olive. You got to put out the olive branch. He shouldn't have to reach out to you. You screwed it up. You clean it up. The majority of the people in the world today do not think um, in the frame that the majority of the consensus of the general public think. The general public thinks this. If you're on television, you're on a syndicated network, you are automatically correct. You know all, you know any and all about everything. You're on TV. You a star. <laughs> Everybody else, they secondary. But you, no, you are the big cheese and the big stick on campus. You know all. And to make matters worse, as if it couldn't get any worse, to make matters worse, y'all feel entitled when y'all are in that position. Y'all feel really entitled. Y'all feel really empowered as if you are above the next man that's next to you to the point where you're willing to sabotage other people's livelihoods. Just for your ego. It's crazy. And people's like, I found you because of Kwame Brown. I appreciate it. And I hope you subscribe to the page. And when you come here, you're going to get one thing. You're going to get the message. We're going to talk about it, but we don't talk nonsense. Throughout, we've been here over 10 years of putting this down. And not once have I promoted nonsense. You know, people, like they said, what happened with Little Reese here in Chicago? Why well, I wasn't talking about Little Reese? I don't deal with Little Reese's music. I don't deal with drill music. I've never been a fan of it. I thought it was detracting from our area, uh, our era, basically, of hip hop. And it led to nothing but people losing their lives. You know, so I was never a fan of it. I never made, even though I could have made tons of money just talking and promoting 
the nonsense with the little trippy reds and syrupy guy going against other syrupy guy, you know, it's, and they talking about who finna wet somebody up and who he got a goon. Oh, he finna shoot him. He got the goons out. Here he come. I was trying to save people's lives when Vaughn got hit. I never spoke on Vaughn a day in my life until he got hit and said, hey, man, look, this has got to stop because everybody in the city is mad. Vaughn didn't just fall. Two other people fell with him. And they're not here also. So those other families destroyed. And y'all talking about going around, retaliating on him, on Quando Rondo, and doing something to him and his people and people around him and all of this. We got to stop this cycle. And that, that should have been the message right there when they saw that. It's like, this got to stop. But it doesn't seem like the people in the machine want to stop it. They want to keep throwing money at it which is even more dangerous. So when you got people like academics and, you know, want to make their living promoting that type of nonsense, what, six, nine, you know, since when he showed Vaughn's autopsy picture and all that stuff and trying to send it to his baby moms, I would have knocked his head off his show. I can't be associated with somebody that would do something like that. I wouldn't, you couldn't even be in the same room with me. I couldn't, I can't be around him. You do, you think, you don't have any morals, no moral compass at all. So there's no way I could be around you. Your spirit ain't right. You'll do anything for a dollar. Those type of people, I don't respect them. I don't want them near me. So therefore, they got to go. So we stop, people stop giving him oxygen. They start talking about 6 9 like he's important. He don't matter. And now he's looked at as just like what he is, a punk. But that's because the machine is the real problem. The machine is throwing the money at it. It's like, who's paying this guy? This guy is getting money to go out and rap. Why? What did he say turning in a song in the studio that y'all said this is excellent? That we got to get him a deal. You see what I'm saying? Now, I understand people rapping from their communities and it's like, this is the music we like. I'm rapping about where I come from. But it's got to come with responsibility. In what you're doing. There's responsibility in everything that you do. But when you're like, man, I don't care. I can just do whatever and say whatever. And you don't take any responsibility for self. You're doing things like taking drugs that you shouldn't be taking. There's no reason why Juice World shouldn't be here today. You know, but when you choose pills and syrup and all these different things... You're already putting yourself at a disadvantage because they are the industry will keep that. They'll keep you getting it and they hope you go. Now they can make a lot more money off your music. And then who's going to fight for the, your masters? We got to do better as people. People was like, oh, you talk about black people too all the time. All you do. No, I talk about the wrong people. I tell about the wrong people. I don't just attack people just because it's going to trend. I talk about the wrong people. And when they doing wrong, so we can get it right. Now, was this apology sincere? No, I don't believe it is. It's it's like, please get off my back so I can get this stuff off here. I screwed up. You should have never sent him a cease and desist letter. You should have never tried to put the dogs on him when the dogs didn't work. He 
He gave them dogs. The mama's cooking. <laughs> now, now you want to get some act right. Now you guys, now you want to get some act right. <laughs> he sprinkled that mama's cooking on there, put that mama's seasoning on them dogs. And now they couldn't do nothing about it. They couldn't shut them down. They couldn't shut them up. They couldn't stop. And he didn't turned up the heat and got all these people back. Woke up from three years ago when you had that them problems. Now they all back on the news and back on the social media trending, and that's not good for future business with you. From people who may not even have heard it or just forgot about everything that happened then. So. On that note. I'm out and definitely like the page. Like we said, uh, the, the super chat is there. It's been there. Hopefully you are, have been super chatting and my cash app is Carcino. We will always prefer that you cash out. <laughs> um, my Patreon is Carcino for life. All my Patreons. We have been lighting it up this month as this has probably been one of the biggest months we've done. Um, yeah, monumental, especially from an educational standpoint. And definitely, we got more to come before this month's even out. We just peeling the layers. So I appreciate all of you guys, man, because this is hard work <laughs> for a lot of us. So we appreciate it. When people appreciate what you do, as you can tell, I'm exhausted, even right now, tired. <laughs> so let me go and take a nap. Sino out.